John Duncan was eccentric. John Duncan the mother was fun. John Duncan the mother was honest and direct. Well, she was human, most of all. Fun, second of all. Every other cousin wanted to be where she was. A real genuine spirit. No put on, no nothing like that. She's just who she is. Just who she is, I mean, um, no pretense whatsoever. She, did, she, uh, she didn't know how to pretend or be something else. She was just raw Joan Duncan. She related to us, not like mother, child, like, you know, that kind of thing where you have this hierarchical kind of arrangement or that kind of thing. Mostly it was spirit to spirit. Nobody better than anybody. She had that, that is the kind of woman that she was. She so, honored everybody. Yeah. There was an expectation in society at the time, when mommy was growing up, of what a woman would do once they became adult. And there was an expectation that you would um, become that housewife, be that wife in the home and be the homemaker, etc. Right? And I was not expected to go and run to go and get a university degree. Right. Was not expected <laughs> first of all to go and get a university degree, which she wanted to. Uh, which she went to go get it and then when she went to go and get it she didn't complete but she was supported by her mother you know but still without her mother understanding why she had this desire and yes the, her mother again supports that but still not understanding then why do you want to become this executive mm -hmm. in the bank and work so hard it's just not the thing to be done dr noel Lyons called her to so to um because he knew that she had this idea and he had a similar idea so he called her and they got they had lunch. She saw the opportunity because having worked in the area that she worked in, in investments, there was a missing there, there was a gap there that she thought that, the, that we needed to fill that gap. He was at Jamaica Venture Fund and so she went into action immediately. And within three weeks, she wrote the business plan, everything, model out everything. And when she presented, almost everybody to a man wanted to buy into that company. Mm -hmm. She was, because she had that, she had, she had, she had, she had an idea vision. from before, she had a vision from before. Right. But the beautiful thing about it too is that she was not, not just an ordinary company she was creating. She was creating a company that was consistent with her values and who she was. Mm -hmm. the, a company that was going to be based on love, openness, not, not um, equality, equity, that kind of company she was creating. Openness, you can be a human being, you share your feelings, everybody free to be exactly who they are, mm -hmm. coming from love. So when you come with this love thing, they were like, what is wrong with this woman? Where is she going with this? She don't realize it's business. But then the competitors underestimated the power of love. She wanted that in every interaction. Mm -hmm. she, wanted to, she wanted to make sure she was in touch with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. manifesting it, but also, that every, there was good out of every, every interaction. interaction. That's our mission statement, you know. Again, that is from best interest of everybody. Yes. Recognizing that all of us are contributing to the profit. Mm. That was very important to her. Like? But at the baseline, so there was, there was a livable wage, so therefore there was a minimum salary yeah. that yes. people should earn. That's oh, yeah. right. Because everybody should be able to own a home. You know, yeah. even no matter how small it is. And then there was a sharing in the upside with the employee sharing the And the profit sharing. She insisted on that profit sharing from the very beginning. That foundation, the values, the vision of love, um, the, 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 the equity, the principle of equity and mm -hmm. willingness to share, it is, this is what has created the foundation for JMB and we still continue to build on that. Her legacy that she'll be proud of is that that is, that is being passed on. It continues in every interaction with anybody who comes in contact with Gem and B. And it continues, and I can say in her children, that we have chosen it and we strive for it to create that kind of space. And it continues in her grandchildren. And that inside of her grandchildren, that the through us, we have been able to give them the space to choose 
who they would like to express themselves as. And so the box has been completely shattered. <laughs> That's for legacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership. You're watching the 8th Annual Joan Duncan Memorial Lecture. And the theme for this year's lecture is Leadership During Crisis. Rochelle Cameron is my coach here today, and she's with our very special guest, Keith Duncan. Let's join them. Thank you very much, Hector. I have the pleasure of sitting with Keith Duncan, the Group Chief Executive Officer at the JMMB Group of Companies. By the way, his financial expertise has not just benefited the JMMB Group, but also the Jamaican financial sector. Keith is currently the president of the Private Sector Association of Organization of Jamaica, the PSOJ. He's past president of the Jamaica Security Dealers Association and continues to contribute his service to Jamaica through various roles, including his current appointment as chairman of the Economic Program and Oversight Committee, EPOC, and as chairman of the National Information Communication Technology Advisory Council. Under his expert leadership, the JMMB Group was conferred with the American Foundation for the University of West Indies Award for Excellence in Business Leadership in February 2020 and the prestigious Best of J Chamber Award from the Jamaica Chamber of Commerce in March 2011. 
Keith was recently awarded the national honor, the order of distinction in the rank of commander for his exceptional service in the field of finance, business, youth empowerment, and community development. Notwithstanding all of his accomplishments, as Martin Luther King Jr. said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. We are certainly living in that time of challenge with the COVID-19 pandemic. There was no textbook on the global pandemic, and Keith is in fact one of the persons that's narrating the text of dealing with a pandemic, leadership during crisis. Keith. Thank you. Hi, Rochelle. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Keith, you run a large financial institution yes, with significant presence in Jamaica, Dominican Republic, and Trinidad. Mm -hmm. You were in 2020 in your first term as president of the PSOJ, yes. your chairman of EPOC, and then the COVID-19 pandemic hits. Yes, ma'am. You obviously did not sit in paralysis and fear. You no. had to jump in action and balance all these roles. Right. Can you tell us about that leadership during crisis, balancing these roles? You know, um, Russell, thank you very much, and thank you to the um, John Duncan School, Entre Entrepreneurship and Ethics, Chairperson Patricia Kimberly Mayer, the JMMB team, thank you, everyone, the, the, the viewership of TVJ today, Thank you very much for um, welcoming, welcoming me into your space. All right? So in, to answer that question in terms of um, how do we balance it, balance. First of all, you have to be able to trust people. You have to operate in a high trust environment. You have to be able to delegate and allow people to manifest their greatness. Allow people to excel and do their part. They will make mistakes, and you will guide them along the way. So you have to operate in a high-trust environment, and you have to create that space. You have to create that environment. You know? So firstly, it begins with you trusting yourself and you trusting the people that you work with. Right? So at the national level, you know, we had to approach it at various levels. We had to approach it at the national level, at the level of the firm, and at the level of the economy. So um, firstly, we, we thought about the private sector, we're now moving into this pandemic, and it's going to affect the way we work. So we had to go on the, to think through, working through what is required in the workspace. So we initially jumped by looking at workplace protocols to protect workers so that we could keep the economy going at the same time. Because we're going into lockdown mode and all kind of things were happening. But how do we protect the they, our workers, health and wellness while protecting our economy. That kind of evolved into balancing lives and livelihoods, right? Firstly, and so therefore we had to pull a team together, inclusive of uh, Nevada Powell, um, Diana Thorborn Chen, and Lloyd Distance, and a group of us, and we started developing workplace protocols by sector. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that evolved into, it, um, into what we call a local services group, which became a comp a sub subcommittee chaired by me under the COVID Economic Recovery Task Force that focused primarily on protocols, you know? But you have to engage good minds, good minds. And then secondly, we had to look at where, where, was, where was Jamaica vulnerable? So as we um, moved into the pandemic and we got into lockdown, we, re we realized, and this was on the prompting of Howard Mitchell and the Minister of Health and Wellness, that um, our age population with underlying conditions in our most marginalized and depressed communities would need support. And therefore, we went about building, building out the PSOJ COVID-19 response fund um, to respond to these poor communities and the most vulnerable in our country. We realized that we would need ventilators, public health. This was coming through, um, again, through um, um, Dr. Carl Bruce out, 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 out at UAE, and we went and we raised funds to purchase ventilators. We realized that we have to rebuild the economy. And therefore, out of that came a new economy group and we moved into the COVID economic, we've migrated into the COVID economic recovery task force. And then JMMB, we had to respond also. And how we responded was first protecting our clients. Firstly, protecting our team members so they can protect our clients and um, protecting our capital, make sure we're solid, liquidity, right? And also, in this crisis, looking forward, opportunities were while 
ensuring that we were solid. Thank you very much for that, Keith. And we're actually, Keith, going to hear now from super, Senior Superintendent Stephanie Lindsay, who worked with you on the COVID-19 relief fund. Yes. Sorry. I'm Stephanie Lindsay, Senior Superintendent of Police and Head of the Jamaica Constabular Forces Corporate Communication Unit. My role with the COVID-19 response project was kind of the liaison between the PSOJ and the Jamaica Constabular Force, the various divisions. So at the very get-go, one of the things that we decided with the PSOG and HUS that if we're going to provide people with support, they should feel dignified. Very early, a decision was made that we were not going to have any center where people come and line up for food packages. All the police officers and commanders got involved and took the packages to these individuals at home. The good part of it is because of our interaction and our engagement with various stakeholders, we are able to put people in touch with support. I interact a lot with Keith Duncan, who is the chairman, and he will tell you as it is. So when we get that kind of feedback now, it's for us to make adjustments. Maybe what the feedback is getting is because we are not communicating well enough. And as a force for good, we want to make sure that we are securing and reassuring. What it did, it broke down a barrier that existed for a very long time between the police and the citizens. So we were actually forced through a pandemic to get outside of our comfort zone. And you know what's very good about it? They were so motivated and happy to do it. Not a soul thrown. It was like we felt we had to do it. We knew we had to do it. And guess what? We all came together and we did it. Keith, mm -hmm. as SSP Lindsay says, you all came together to do it. And Keith will tell you as it is. Keith. Social partnerships. Yes. Tell us about the importance of that leadership. Yes. Now, you know, we are we operate in a low trust environment in Jamaica. And I can understand why we operate in a low trust environment, you know. Um, you know, the Jamaican people would would feel that we have not delivered on the promise of independence. They would feel that um, we haven't delivered on our targets. They would feel that we have corruption that is in high and low places. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it, it creates a low trust environment. Now, how do we now work together? First of all, you have to trust people's intentions, right? And therefore, we have to build partnerships, build partnerships, you know, because um, Jamaica is in a crisis in many areas of our, of, of, of our life. Crime, you know, um, we need social transformation, you know, of values and attitudes, you know. Poverty levels are high. Education, we're not getting the outcomes that we want. You know what I mean? But it means that, and the most effective way to be able to pull it together and get the energy moving with people and that kind of uh, um, what you, um, a synergistic, you know, explosive kind of energy is through social partnerships. When people come together and trust each other and we have a direction and we know where we're going and everybody is engaged, we can do, we can do great things. We have seen it in the past with our economic reform program through EPOC, when in a crisis situation, we had to come together and EPOC came about and because we asked that we need an oversight body, the unions, the financial sector, the private sector, we had a were in operating a low trust environment. We didn't trust that our government was going to deliver and we, they gave us the oversight and we came together and we were able to deliver under the initial leadership of Richard Biles, who did a tremendous job, and Peter Phillips, who facilitated this partnership. Thank you so much, Keith. The engagement, the engagement, the engagement, trusting our people. Viewers, a riveting conversation here with Keith Duncan. We'll be back in just a moment. Don't even move. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB and Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started 
Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of... And project lead for the PSOG COVID-19 Jamaica Response Fund. Working with Keith was an extraordinary experience. I'd never worked with him prior to last year when he contacted and asked if I would come on board and volunteer for this very important activity. I didn't know what he meant when he, when he asked me to come on board. I didn't realize what his vision was. When I came on board, I quickly realized that his vision was huge, that he really wanted to impact as many people as possible. And he got me very quickly and very early on to buy into that vision. And Keith was able to mobilize and activate whenever we needed his support. He continued to uh, drive and motivate us all. If I had one takeaway about Keith, I would say that he really knows how to build really good teams because it was the team that allowed us to have the impact. And if we didn't have these cohesive teams, there's no way we could have achieved what we achieved. Through this project, we were able to collaborate with public, private, and social sector, but we were also really able to mobilize and work with communities on the ground. So through the NGOs that we worked with, the members of the CVSS that really supported us, the Jamaica Red Cross and the Salvation Army and other NGOs out there, through working with people like SSP Lindsay and Brigadier Mason and Major Barrett, Chris Bicknell and Paris Luayi, we were really able to develop a strong team that when we got out into the communities, we really got this sense that we were reaching people that we needed to reach, that we were reaching the communities that we needed to reach. What this project allowed us all to do was feel empowered at a time when most people felt disempowered. It allowed us to take control at a time when most people felt that they had no control over anything. And it allowed us to come together and collaborate for the greater good. Welcome back to the eighth annual Joan Duncan Foundation Lecture. In studio, we have my co-chair, Hector Wheeler, Professor Colin Giles of the University of Technology, President of the University of, the Techno of Technology, and Chairperson for the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, Mrs. Patricia Duncan Sutherland. I am here with Keith Duncan, who is talking to us today about leadership during crisis. Now, Keith, mm -hmm. in the video earlier, Trisha said that your mother would be looking down with right. pride. Right. Your mother started the JMMB group right. in a time of a financial crisis yep. with a lot of naysayers. Who was talking about investment at that right, time? Right. We needed food. So what valuable lessons have you learned from your mother 
that your leadership has been able to take through JMMB to where it is right now? Right. Thank you, Mama Trotia. Thanks for that question. And, you know, once your intention is to serve people and to serve them well, and your value proposition is based on that principle of good, then I believe that we had the confidence to deliver that value proposition, which was to open up the money market, which was primarily the domain of large financial institutions, to the average Jamaican citizen, to the average um, um, small and medium enterprise, to the, even the large institutions that did not have the exposure to the secondary markets and the money markets, and we created it. And we helped people realize their dreams, help people to realize their dreams of owning a home, help the average citizen by opening this up to them, this secondary market, the money market, to the average Jamaican citizen. Their homes, education for them children, retirement, all of their objectives, their life goals and objectives, and that continues to be the mantra of JMB financial partnership, achieving their goals in life. So that, once you are there, you can navigate any challenge, challenge, challenge that comes. And Jamaica full of challenge and crisis. Jamaica in a crisis from how long? And um, we, we have built that capacity to be able to manage through crisis. Jamaica people resilient bad, you know, them resilient bad. Them creative and they're resilient and we have to just trust them. But they, to get back to JMB you now, and we also have our vision of love, which anchors us. And as Trisha says, it's not only John Duncan children and John Duncan grandchildren that believe in it. The JMB team um, believes and live it day to day in how we interact and love each other and how we support each other. That's what makes JMB special. Now, when you have that kind of power, none can stop you. Nothing can really stop you because you have a solid, solid foundation. And you know, we have a declaration at JMB, and it says, I believe so strongly, and this is containing our vision of love, our, our guiding philosophy. I believe so strongly in myself that I will not get defensive by criticism as I know that every experience is an opportunity for growth. I will nurture and build my fellow team players. I will use every opportunity to praise and give thanks. I embrace the uncertainty that forms part of my vision and I have a strong enough faith to know that everything that happens along my path happens for a reason and that all things work together for my good. So when you live in that world, nothing can stop you. Wow, Keith. Yes. I felt that declaration. Right, and right. that's a declaration that permeates through the business of JMMB. Yes. And as you are looking to the future of Jamaica, the different roles that you play, mm -hmm. what are you seeing as the outlook for us, 2021 right. and beyond? Well, you know, if we can capitalize on the energy of Jamaican people, on the creativity of the Jamaican people, on the resilience of the Jamaican people, and if we can really engage them in an open and honest way, in a non-divisive way, and, you know, and start to break down this toxic environment that we have in this low-trust environment, first of all, if we can just trust each other, you know what I mean, and trust our leaders and their intentions on both sides of the political, civil society, everybody, can we just try and create an environment where we can just love each other and trust each other? Can we come out of this thing of just the toxic kind of thing that we live in day to day, the negativity, and just move into a positive growth mindset and engage our people and move them along? Them good, them can pick sense out of nonsense. The Jamaican people know exactly what we need to do, and they are tired of the foolishness. So, leaders, let's get ourselves together and work together and cooperate to make Jamaica great because we know we've done great already. Make we manifest that greatness. You understand? That is what I would want. So firstly, we have the opportunity for digital transformation. You know, because Jamaica can leapfrog. It don't take a lot of money for us to leapfrog, right? And to, to, to become a digital society. We can be world class. If we focus our minds, we can get there. We can work on digital literacy. We can work in a rollout broadband, fiber, um, and the, the national information communication backbone that will provide that basis for us to know build an ICT site. We have a whole of bright people in Jamaica 
them migrating and them going to foreign to work and get big job at Google all over the place. We want them right here creating value right here in Jamaica. Human capital development, focus on our people, focus on our people, you know, get into those marginalized and depressed communities. Let's go and support them. All them need, need is a little love and respect. You know what I mean? Let's get some resources into those communities. Let's reallocate resources to those people who have made Jamaica great, our athletes, our musicians, where them come from, inner city, rural communities, that's where they're from. Those are the people that put Jamaica on the map. Bob Marley, where they come from, St. Anne, Trenchdown. So let us know, um, invest in our people to move them along. Social transformation, very important. And that's how you're going to prevent crime. That is how you're going to reduce crime, through, through crime prevention strategies by engaging people in those communities and having them feel a part of it and not know they must lead it also. Thank you very much, Keith. So we have heard from you on engagement. Mm -hmm. We've heard from you on social partnership. We cannot leave this segment. We have like 30 seconds. What nuggets would you leave with our emerging and aspiring leaders? Right. Well, I would say, one, you have to trust. You have to create that, that high trust environment because that is where your people are free to unleash their ideas. That is number one. Secondly, you have to be a possibility thinker. You have to move out the negative space. And you have to know there is that you have to be open to ideas. You must do your research. You must do your work. You must have a plan, a framework through which you work. You have to build that framework and you must have a plan. You know what I mean? So one, you create that environment that is, what, that is, that is embracing of um, a growth mindset. Right? That's the most important. So you create that environment of the growth mindset. You have to be a possibility thinker. Yes. Viewers, we have had the pleasure of listening to Keith Duncan, but it's not over. We're going to go to a break, and we're going to have a panel discussion with Keith Duncan as he takes us through leadership during crisis. See you in a moment. Don't even get up. We're back with Keith Duncan shortly. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of ease and convenience of our virtual 24-7 space at our Technology Innovation Center. Apply now and reap the rewards. 
At the JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, we believe that there is greatness within every single Jamaican. And this is why we started Conversations for Greatness. We are standing for the greatness of Jamaica. Do you want to stand for the greatness of Jamaica? Join us in supporting the transformation of Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC Jamaica, number one for innovation and entrepreneurship. After 10 years of service, we create the entrepreneurial mindset, enabling all our students to have a registered innovative business before they graduate. Enjoy the benefits of Welcome back. Rochelle calls it riveting, riveting discussion, I agree. This is the final segment in our eighth Joan Duncan lecture. We have Keith Duncan, CEO of JMMB Group, JMMB Group, Patricia Duncan Sutherland, Chairperson, JMMB Joan Duncan Foundation, and Professor Colin Giles, Acting President at UTEC Jamaica. And they will be answering questions from our audience. In the Zoom chat room, we have past scholarship awardees of the Joan Duncan Foundation, Shalise Anderson and Lawyer Horton. Robin Murray, President of UTEC Jamaica Students' Union, and Roxanne Sadler, Scholarship Awardee, Joan Duncan Trust. And so I'm going to start with uh, Robin, who will ask, ask the first question. Robin, please go ahead. Good afternoon. I am Robin Murray, and this question is directed to Mrs. Patricia Duncan Sutherland. Okay. Many non-government organizations have filled gaps in leadership on several social issues, but they are not well supported or resourced, but they still play a critical role in our Jamaican society. How would you suggest those leaders of NGOs handle this pandemic? Well, you know, it's forging the partnerships that, that is going to actually make us be able to get the bang for the buck in that in this crisis. What has happened to us in Jamaica, a lot of our NGOs have always been quite separate in the way that they work. What this pandemic has created for us is the opportunity for more of them to come together in, for, in one accord. So you heard Safri speaking, she's the head of CVSS, Council for Voluntary Services. I believe they, that brings together several foundations and NGOs to come together to work on this. So the opportunity in the crisis is for deeper partnership. The question is, how do we trust that when we go into that partnership, and speaking to Keith's point about trust, when we go into that partnership, that we will all be working together and working towards the same outcome. And in that trust, how then can we put down our own egos and um, need to be the person in charge and to allow for a wider ownership of an idea? And that would be the big challenge for an NGO in this time allowing for wide ownership of your idea as you move it forward. Okay, next on Zoom. Our, our next person on Zoom can go ahead. Good afternoon, my name is Aloya Houghton and I am a 2014 Joan Duncan Foundation Scholar. My question is for Keith Duncan. At the end of this crisis, this pandemic, do you envision yourself making any changes to your leadership strategy or style? Why or why not? Um, into changes, thank you very much for the question. And I'm trying, do I envision making any changes to my leadership style? I don't think so. I think, um, you know, the, my leadership style is guided by principles and um, of, you know, just, um, it's my, it's who I am and it's who we are. As, um, as a team that works together. And I try and bring that to where, whichever organization that I happen to work with or to lead. Now, in terms of um, adjust, uh, strategies to adjust, strategies are always adjusting as, um, as the world evolves. And as we see where this pandemic is going, different business models will emerge. We see what's going with digit digitization. It forced Jamaica and it forced um, you know, businesses to reconfigure, to pivot. And that's why we did last year what we call COVID cast. Um, the PSOJ did COVID cast with our own Rochelle right here and Nevada Poe guiding that, guiding that effort to really sh demonstrate to help people, small businesses, medium businesses, to pivot their businesses, 
Look at where the opportunities are. Look at how you navigate this pandemic. Look at what it may look like on the other side of the pandemic. You know, so therefore, we are constantly reevaluating and always looking at changing strategies to move us forward. Good. Thank you very much, Keith. Our uh, next um, uh, person from the Zoom chat room may go ahead with a question, please. Good afternoon. My name is Shelise Anderson, and my question is to Mrs. Patricia uh, Duncan Sutherland. So the question is, what is one leadership skill that you think has been most imperative in aiding you to effectively lead during this uh, pandemic? Well, for me as a leader, the biggest thing is openness to partnership, working in this pandemic. You have to really be open to partnership. And uh, generally, who I am is partnership. Who I am also is very, I have fixity of purpose. That's one of the things that I bring to leadership. So very clear and uh, knowing exactly what the outcome is, making that plan as Keith spoke to and knowing the steps to get there. So helping to break that down for people so that they don't feel panicked is also an important part of leadership in crisis. If you can make the problem not as big as it is for an individual and they can see their space in the solution without making it feel very complicated, then um, it is easier for persons to participate in the solution. So as a leader, I see those two things, creating that partnership and two, helping people to break down their work so that they can knowing, know how they can contribute without feeling overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the question. <laughs> and thank you too, Pat. Do we have another question from the Zoom chat room, please? You may go good ahead. Day to the, good day to the panelists and viewers. My name is Roxon Sadler. I'm a student of the University of Technology and John Duncan Trust Scholar. My question is to Professor Jazz. Do you see our education system in its current form really fostering the development of good leaders for Jamaica? Thank you so much for that question. I do believe that our education system as it is has a number of positive elements to it that serve to enhance the development of our young people. Now, there is room for improvement, and as you're aware, there is the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission that is presently looking at the entire education system to see how it can be improved. But speaking more specifically at, say, the University of Technology Jamaica, where I'm at, a university is an innovative space, and so we foster innovation, we, we foster creativity, we train students to think, we expose them to case studies, and also you know that at the John Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, we have the Technology Innovation Center also, which is the first business entrepreneurship incubator in the English-speaking Caribbean that is school-based, where we expose students to business leaders, we have been inspired by Keith Duncan, for example, and what he has shared with us this afternoon. We expose our students to business lead leaders who are making a difference. And so I believe that our education system has room for improvement, but I have every confidence that we are able to navigate the present challenges to make a difference in shaping our leaders for the future. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Colin Giles. And uh, thanks to our friends in the Zoom chat room. Chat room. We've been feeling the questions to our panel. Uh, the past scholarship awardees of the John Duncan Foundation, Shalise Anderson and Lawyer Horton, Robin Murray, who is president of UTech Jamaica Students Union, and Roxanne Sadler, scholarship awardee, John Duncan Trust. I have a question that was passed to me from the audience to be addressed by um, Keith Duncan. Keith Duncan, they're asking for an yes, assessment sir. of what we have uh, in Jamaica right now. Do you, would you say that we are lacking in good leaders in both the public and private sectors? I, um, I really do believe that um, we have caliber leadership right across the board. 
it's how we are really pulling it, pulling that leadership together. How are we creating the and selecting and prioritizing our areas of focus? So if we say digital transformation is our agenda and digital transformation can lead to even how we deliver education, that we can make it scalable that, and that we can get devices into the hands of our students and that we can get and we can build content that we can get that we can deliver education you know and we can use the pbc and these these formats for delivering education in critical thinking in digital digital literacy in financial literacy in how to be a good citizen right but we do have a leadership it's how we pull it all together and provide that focus now when i look at it across the the, 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 the public sector and the private sector what I, what I have noticed through these social partnerships, when we get together and we know that no one has any one agenda but meeting that objective, people work together in a seamless way. So it's not hard to achieve. It's really not hard to achieve. So it's a matter of just pulling people together, knowing that we have no agenda, but just a common objective of the common good of people. And uh, just quickly, Keith, what should the average Jamaican expect from a leader in Jamaica? No, what an, the, the, what an average citizen should expect is open communication. Open communication, engagement, and for, them to, and for the leader to trust your Jamaican people. Now, we know we operate in a, in a low trust environment, so the leaders, the leaders are sometimes nervous to go out and to put a transformational uh, objective on the table because it's going to and, um, and, and say to execute a plan which may have areas that may need work and they are afraid because civil society going to cost them the opposition going to cost them on both sides of the fence we have seen it over the years across administrations where the whole it, 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 environment becomes toxic but okay. what a leader now has to push through that just trust these Jamaican people as I say they can't pick sense out of nonsense Thank and you so much. Let's move forward and transform our country. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Keith. Let me have the uh, final 30 seconds from you, Pat, and then Professor Giles. Time is always galloping away from us. <laughs> That's right. Yes. Well, what I would want us to take away from here, leadership in crisis, partnership, trust. But we have to be purposeful around building that trust and to ensure that we come from a space of first trusting ourselves and trusting each other. Because if you don't come from that space of honesty and openness, then you will, it will be very difficult to build that trust. Thank you so, so much, Pat. Mm -hmm. Professor Giles. Thank you so much. I just want to say that in a crisis, as Keith has so ably articulated, there needs to be trust. There needs to be respect. There needs to be open communication. Persons cannot panic and make changes for change's sake. We must be responsive and we must seek to engage. So it is really my pleasure sharing, and I believe our viewers would have benefited immensely from the wisdom that has been shared this evening. Thank this you afternoon. so much, Professor Jazz. This has been really exciting. Rochelle says vision, uh, riveting. <laughs> Uh, discussion here. As we come to the end of another interesting lecture, I take the opportunity to thank those who made it possible. Thanks to the Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership of the University of Technology, Jamaica. The Joan Duncan School of Entrepreneurship, Ethics and Leadership, UTEC, Jamaica. The Joan Duncan Mrs. Patricia Duncan Sutherland, Chair, Joan Duncan Foundation, and Professor Colin Giles, Acting President, UTEC, Jamaica. On behalf of Rochelle Cameron, my co-host today, I'm Hector Wheeler, thanking you for watching. We we'll look forward to seeing you next year. Do enjoy the rest of the afternoon, and remember, wear your masks, sanitize, and practice social distancing.